What's up, YouTube? Deluxe for today. Here we go as my review on the Nintendo Switch presentation. I'm going to break down the positives and negatives on the entire presentation. Starting off with the pros, the Nintendo Switch is priced at $300, which I think is a good price tag for the console. It's definitely not too low, not too high, but it's right in the middle there. It's definitely affordable if you have a steady paying job, honestly. There's also a few other features that were confirmed for the Nintendo Switch, which include the tablet being a touch screen, and you can connect the Nintendo Switch to your Wi-Fi. The Nintendo Switch is releasing on March 3rd, which is right around the corner. I didn't think it would be releasing early March. It's not going to be at the end of March, which many people were predicting. Also, there's no region locking, so if you're a big fan of getting foreign games instead of having to just get games that are centered in your region. For those who do love playing other foreign games that they can't since they're in a different country, there you go. Nintendo also announced a new IP, which is ARMS, which is going to be more of a gimmick type game, honestly, because you got to use the Joy-Cons, it's motion control. This is going to be like the new punch out for Nintendo. And this is definitely going to be prepping some of these ARM characters to be in Super Smash Bros. I can see it already. So this looks like a fun game. I don't think it's going to be a big system seller, but it looks like this game is going to take a good amount of skill. But we'll have to wait and see how the controls work. And speaking of ARMS, the Joy-Con controllers, like I said before, do have motion controls. The Joy-Con also comes with HD rumble. Like for example, you can feel like ice cubes, you can feel the amount of ice cubes in like a cup. In a sense, I'm really interested to see how that's going to play out with other games that are more action heavy. Are you going to feel yourself getting punched? Are you going to feel yourself falling on the ground or something? That's definitely going to be quite interesting to see how they're going to perfect HD rumble. You can also use the Joy-Con controllers to capture images and video of your game and come in different colors such as neon blue and neon red. And I think in the future the Nintendo Switch is going to have other variations of the Joy-Con controllers that are more themed towards Mario, Zelda, and what other games that may come out on the Switch, so I'm looking forward to that. The Joy-Con also has Amiibo support, you just put your Amiibo on the Joy-Con. The Nintendo Switch also comes with Joy-Con straps, which are made for easier gripping when playing certain games that require more motion, and they have better uh, bumpers for the Joy-Con as well. And one of the best announcements out of this presentation is Breath of the Wild launching with the Nintendo Switch. They show off this amazing trailer. We got a good glimpse of Zelda. We got good glimpses of the other characters within the game as well. This game looks fantastic. This game is definitely going to be a big system seller for the Nintendo Switch. Can't wait to play Zelda at home and play it on the go. Whether it's on a plane, on a bus, in a car. It's going to be fantastic all around. Other games I'm excited for for the Nintendo Switch are Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Super Mario Odyssey, Fire Emblem Warriors, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Now let's get into the negatives of the Nintendo Switch presentation. The launch lineup is so weak. I don't like it at all. Not including Zelda, there's four games, which are 1-2 Switch, Super Bomberman R, Skylanders Imaginators, Just Dance 2017. So that lineup's not that good. There are gonna be other games coming out later in March, but if you wanna sell your console Nintendo, you wanna sell your console for all ages, honestly. Like, this still feels like the Wii U 2.0 when I'm looking at this lineup of games. Nintendo, where are your existing IPs? Metroid. Pokemon, I'm surprised there wasn't a Pokemon game for the Nintendo Switch. Where was that whole thing about Pokemon Stars? I guess that's not a thing. Where are some of the big third party titles? Honestly, I don't think this is a good start for the Nintendo Switch to come off the bat with like just these five games in particular. There's so many IPs that Nintendo is holding back, like the F-Zero series is being replaced by that fast RMX game. There's no Super Smash Brothers, so I'm guessing they're making a new version of that in the future. Like I said before, I'm not impressed with this launch lineup for the Nintendo Switch. And honestly, most of the presentations for the Nintendo Switch were cringe weather. Example, Splatoon 2. Splatoon 2. Now, this is a minor negative, paying for online. Now, I never really cared for online with Nintendo games, because usually I just play these games with my friends or my, my family members. But I do understand why they're making you pay for online, seeing that they want online to be a better experience for Nintendo fans and for the average consumer. That way they can put in more effort into the online modes and it's going to be like free up until the fall of 2017. That's probably because there's not a lot of online games coming out for the Nintendo Switch early on in its launch. I still feel like the third party games are a bit lackluster. I feel like there's not enough games to bring in all demographics. For example, Skyrim. This game is old. I really think they should have went with something more modern like Fallout 4 or get like The Witcher 3. This isn't Skyrim the Special Edition. This is just the regular Skyrim. I'm sure it's going to be cool playing Skyrim on the go and whatnot, but I don't think it's going to be enough to say, hey, I'm going to get a Nintendo Switch so I can play Skyrim anywhere I want. And then moving on to the specs, it has a 32 gigabyte internal storage, which is pretty low. It's like the same thing as the Wii U. Why is the storage for Nintendo consoles so low? I don't understand. 
but you can expand the storage with a micro SDXC card. I don't know how much those cost. I think those cost a good amount of money, like maybe 25, 30 bucks. It really frustrates me knowing that I have to go buy something else to expand my storage. Not a good move, Nintendo. Not a good move at all. And the battery life when it's in handheld mode, they, they say it varies from two and a half hours to six and a half hours depending on the game. That doesn't really give us a whole lot of information. But overall, I think the Nintendo Switch it looks like a good console. I just think it needs a better lineup of games. Of course, the big seller for the Nintendo Switch is going to be The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but everything else just seems like, eh, whatever. I'm sure the Nintendo fans are happy, but is the rest of the world? Not so much. Just take a look at Nintendo stock. I mean, come on, it's going down like this. But let me just in comments and download. What are your thoughts on the Nintendo Switch? Do you think it's going to live up to the hype, or do you think it's going to be another flop like the Wii U? Let me know in the comments section down below. Like, subscribe, more content to me on the Nintendo Switch. And other games in general, I'm Demolex. I'll see you in the future.